Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. Shots fired in Moorhead early this morning started as an accident. The police say the situation was made worse by the man's poor decision making. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Mike has the evening off. Moorhead police say the investigation is ongoing, but they have enough evidence to know what really happened. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop spoke with police about how the accidental gunshot turned into concern and a big headache for neighbors. Moorhead police say shots were fired inside and then outside of an apartment. It is believed that it was uh, um, unfamiliarity with the weapon and an accidental discharge happened and then uh, in that state of panic uh, trying to get the attention away from themselves they went outside and discharged the firearm outside. The upstairs neighbor did not want to speak on camera but tells us it is a family of four including two teenagers that live in the apartment below him. He says he was woken up in the middle of the night to police questioning him and was concerned. After hearing that it was an accident, the neighbor says it did not surprise him that the teenager tried to cover it up, saying most teenagers and kids do not want to get in trouble. The evidence was there and uh, the investigation revealed that they were responsible. Police say the 18-year-old man that fired the shots was uncooperative with police at first and may face charges of reckless endangerment and firing a gun within the city. In Moorhead, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. Fargo police also investigated reports of possible gunshots early this morning. They received a call around 3 a.m. in the 2900 block of 7th Street North. Police say they haven't found any evidence to prove that shots were fired. They didn't find any bullet holes or shell casings and were not able to locate a firearm. A witness reported seeing an SUV leave the area. Police pulled over the SUV and arrested this man, 41-year-old Shannon Clothier, for unrelated charges. He, has, he had brass knuckles, which are illegal, along with meth and drug paraphernalia. We are just under an hour now before kickoff at the Fargo Dome as the Bison take on the Richmond Spiders, a team they have never played before. And if they win this game, the Bison will be going for their fifth straight national championship. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric is stationed at the Fargo Dome in Bradford. I hear you talked with some fans lighting up the dome tonight. That's right, Stephanie. These massive bison heads and words defend the dome here behind me. They're the brainchild of uh, a Florida man, and he's a big, big bison fan. This group of we just kind of had some ideas as far as how to make it bigger and better each week and talked about bat symbols and then one thing led to another and you know the, the next week it's 10 in the morning or 6 in the morning we got lights up on the dome and we're rocking. You know it's a fun group out here with all the trailers and vehicles decaled and customized for the bison and everyone is trying to outdo the next guy and Some fans are flocking to the gates right now, while others are just trying to stay warm here at the tailgate. Ladies and gentlemen, it is pretty darn cold out here. Um, but it's not nearly the coldest that it's been for tailgating, but it's, it's, it's chilly. Uh, stay with Valley News Live uh, for the recap of this game. Beth and uh, Beth Hool and Alex Egan will have all of your wrap-up here from this Bison game later tonight. Reporting live at the Fargo Dome, Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. All right, try to stay warm, Bradford. Thanks. There are five lights aimed at the Fargo Dome tonight. If you're headed out to the game or nearby in North Fargo, you can look at the dome to see the cool projections. And for those still in need for the perfect sweatshirt for tonight's game, or maybe a Christmas gift, the NDSU bookstore is continuing to bring in new items for fans. A stand with Bison Gear is going to be at the Fargo Dome before the game and during the fourth quarter. The store also has most of its products online, including some sale items. We have a link to their webpage on valleynewslive.com. Just click on the hot button. Thousands of people are gearing up for the big game tonight, which means thousands of people were out tailgating in freezing conditions. 
Let's head over to Hutch Johnson for a first look at how those temperatures are out there. Hutch? Unspider-like, we'd say. I'm not going to see many spiders outside as we head into the evening. Clear skies and that fresh snow really going to cause those temperatures to plummet. Now, I expected clearing skies last night, but the clouds kept us milder. We have temperatures already in the single digits. Factor in winds around 10 miles per hour, and we have nasty wind chill across the valley. It feels like around 10 to 20 below. It feels like 21 below this hour in Langdon. Temperatures as we go through the late evening hours will dip below zero before we even head to bed tonight, Stephanie. It's going to be bitter cold overnight with some dangerous wind chills. We'll have details on some warmer air that makes its way back into the valley, but also for travelers for the holiday season next week, some snow showers that uh, will hit the area. I'll have details on what we're thinking there as well. It's going to be a very interesting ride, but a white Christmas, hopefully. It's Yeah, we're definitely having a white Christmas. Okay, yes. all right, thank you, you Hutch. Bet. A new way to make your Christmas list is catching on, but beware of what you're asking for. You could be vulnerable to hackers. Target shut down part of its app, its mobile app, after security experts said the gift registry and wish lists are easy to hack, possibly exposing your address, phone number, and other personal information. Target says the app is back up and running today, adding they fixed any potential problems. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter, Nicole Johnson, stopped into the mall to talk with some last-minute Christmas shoppers. Noon on a Friday usually isn't this busy. Uh, I still got some stuff left, so. Andre Kalar is out shopping for his family using a list created online. As I see what I want, like, throughout the day, I'll just go on my phone and add it on that way, so pretty easy. He uses a wish list on Amazon, but others are using a variety of retailers or an app you can add links to and even play Secret Santa. It's a lot easier than really any other way. You get what you really want. Yeah. You can always just text them and tell them what you want to. How do you find out what your grandkids want? I ask their moms and dads, and they t give me a list, and I go from there. Candace Lund doesn't do online stuff. I'm not good with computers or anything, so I like shopping in the stores. And it's fun, people watching and just having a good time. She says there's just too much risk buying online. And she wasn't surprised when we told her some technology experts are calling out flaws in online wish lists, saying they could expose your information. You hear about hackers getting into anything, so I'm sure that if someone wants to get into something like a target wish list, they can. Why they would want to, I don't know. If you are going digital, experts say, be cautious. Don't give away any unnecessary information to an app. If they don't need your location, birthday, or credit card information, don't enter it. Nicole Johnson, Valley News Live. If shopping is on your mind, today is free shipping day. More than 900 merchants are taking part with offers on items that will purportedly arrive by Christmas Eve. Moorhead police say they are adding a new investigator to the Tom Bierson murder case. Bierson was an NDSU freshman who went missing and was found dead last Septem September of last year. Lieutenant Tori Jacobson says they have volumes of data and material to go through, and he says lots of comparisons to be made. An additional investigator that was just added to our investigations division, and they themselves have been assigned are going to become more familiar with the fresh eyes on the case. Jacobson says his department is working with various agencies on the case, and they met earlier this week. A Minnesota man was arrested today after he led police on a high-speed chase exceeding 90 miles an hour. 35-year-old Joseph Johnson from Hopkins, Minnesota, led police on a nine-mile chase through Becker County. The vehicle went into the ditch in Johnson, and a passenger fled on foot. Johnson was arrested a short time later. Crystal Herman, the woman who was charged in the October robbery of a convenience store in Purley, Minnesota, made her first court appearance today in Crookston. Herman, along with her husband, Billy, are charged in connection with the robbing of this Senex in Purley with a baseball bat. Crystal was being held in North Dakota on other charges. Her husband, Billy, is still jailed in North Dakota on other charges and will eventually be moved to Minnesota to face the robbery charges. The Salvation Army Police Fire and Realtors Challenge is complete, and the results are in. Later at 6, find out who came out on top. And the nation's chilliest temperatures are right here in the valley, and it will get even colder into the overnight. Details on that, and then a warm-up coming up right after this.